Prima Bolin, another old classic anabolic steroid back in the day, used by men and women, used for cutting and show preparation, also classically used with other steroids for bulking extended phases, comes in both intermuscular and pill form, and interestingly enough, thought to be one of the safer anabolic steroids in the world. We will discuss the amazing history and some of the politics of Prima Bolin that lends itself to be so expensive because it's faked so often. Limited medical uses, the of course, the pharmacology and structure of this moderately strong anabolic steroid that is non-estrogenic and mildly androgenic. We will discuss the amazing features and of course side effects of this anabolic steroid. The history of primabolin, methanolone enanthate, and methanolone acetate, described in 1960 by Squibb Pharmaceuticals. Marketed in the United States in 1962 as a medication brand name called Nibel Depot for a very short period of time. Also in 1962, the rights were transferred to shearing known today as Bayer Pharmaceuticals uh, and marketed as Prima Bolin at that time. Now, that was into the 1960s and 70s. This drug was not marketed in the United States. It was only marketed over in Europe. Now, during that time period, it was utilized for medical purposes only. Into the 1990s, from pressure from the anti-doping agencies in sports, it was pulled off the market in Europe at that time in the 1990s. And currently, it is still available in brand name in a limited locations in the world, Spain, Japan, Turkey, Paraguay, and Ecuador. And there may be some other small countries in the Middle East. It's actually still a viable drug in America on the FDA list. But of course, it's widely reproduced in the underground, and that's why you see so many fakes of this drug. Medical uses of Prima Bolin. Just like other anabolic steroids, it is used to promote lean muscle tissue, status post cachexic conditions of muscle wasting, surgeries, various disease states, and of course, infectious disease states classically like chronic hepatitis because this medicine is anabolic and it is actually uh, very weakly hepatotoxic, if hepatotoxic at all, especially in the intermuscular form. Interestingly enough, it was marketed to treat advanced breast cancer in women. Amazing feature, it was used in premature infants and children that had failure to thrive. And there were actually studies indicating that it worked well and it had limited side effects. Another amazing medical use for this drug was it was used to counter the adverse effects of people being on corticosteroids for prolonged periods like prednisone. And that's used for people that have diseases such as rheumatoid arthritis, asthma, COPD, and we know that when people use corticosteroids for a prolonged period, they can have side effects secondary to the corticosteroids, moon faces, puffiness, malaise, fatigue, and they get cachexic. So using an anabolic steroid that is not estrogenic to lead to further weight gain and water gain from the corticosteroid would be brilliant. These are amazing features that I've found in my research on these drugs, and I always wonder, what happened to these studies and what happened to these utility of these drugs way back in the day? Because these drugs have been damned for political reasons throughout the world. And you just have to wonder why couldn't it be used for people that are suffering some of these real medical conditions. Interesting feature is that apart from other anabolic steroids that increase red blood cell mass, 
This medicine is not used for anemia. It, of course, will increase red blood cells, but nothing like testosterone or some of the other anabolic steroids like equipoise that we know. Pharmacology and structure. Methanolone and nanthate for the intermuscular injection, acetate in the oral form. This is a DHT-derived anabolic steroid by the addition of a double bond between carbon 1 and 2. And for the intermuscular form, there is a carboxylic acid ester, and anthoic acid attached to the 17-beta hydroxyl group versus the standard acetatic form for the oral agent. The half-life for the oral agent is very short, four to six hours, which lends itself to multi-day dosing, either two to three times a day dosing for medical dosing. The half-life of the intermuscular agent is similar to testosterone, has a half-life of about five to eight days, depending on the individual. Side effects of primabolin, it is slightly less anabolic versus testosterone. It is not estrogenic because it's DHD derived. So it's not affected by aromatase. So in theory, used alone as a sole agent, you would see no gonochromastia and no water gain. But of course we know it's not used alone often, it's used with other steroids. So with classic cutting paradigms and other non-aromatizable steroids, you're going to see Primo with Halotestin, Primo with Tren, classically used. In the bulking cycles, you're going to see Primo Bolin used with aromatizable steroids, most commonly testosterone. Of course, aromatase inhibitors really won't work for Primo Bolin by itself, but of course, these medicines and PCT are used classically with cycles of men that are using this drug because they're using it with other drugs, with other aromatizable and non-aromatizable steroids. Androgenic. It's a mild androgenic drug, about half that of testosterone. So used alone in men, you would see minimal side effects like hair loss, acne, even sexual side effects. But again, it's usually not used alone. Now, in women, this is amazing. This is a classically utilized drug in women. All women that are in the bodybuilding world, the physique world, they're going to use this drug from time to time to different degrees with other drugs. So, in women, hair loss, facial hair, clitoral growth. This will depend on if they're using it by itself with other agents and of course the duration and the dose. It also is woman per woman. I have heard so many women say that they love it, they use small doses with other drugs like Anivar for an example maybe, and they suffer very minimal side effects. But I think every woman's going to realize and the truth is that it will change the voice on most women, uh, even in small doses over time. So. Another amazing fact and feature of Prima Bowen is that it's used to increase the effects of testosterone. Why? That's because anabolic steroids, all of them, and particularly this drug, will lower sex hormone binding globin. And when you lower sex hormone binding globin, you're going to increase the free testosterone in the circulation. And of course, with that, you're going to get side effects secondary to the increase in the free testosterone. So, very interesting. And I do have to say that as people think this is not a very suppressive agent, uh, as it's not very heavily androgenic, you will see different degrees of anabolic steroid-induced hypogonadism, even when it's used alone. So please be very, very careful. And this is regardless of using PCT or not. Continued side effects, hepatotoxicity. Very interesting, this drug itself in the IM form is not hepatotoxic at all. And even in the oral form, the studies in children showed that it has limited hepato liver toxicity. But please, again, be, be very, very careful with this drug because we really don't know this and there's not 
a bunch of studies that are very well done on this for adults, certainly, not to mention children. So in my practice, though, I have seen that men that are using over years using this drug solely, it really hasn't affected their liver function. Very amazing. But then I see men using it with other agents and I can't tell what agent is causing the increase in the liver enzymes. And obviously it's gonna be usually an oral steroid. The kidney, the renal effects. Most of the renal effects that I see are secondary to water weight gain, inherent issues in genetics for a man, and hypertension. So over years and years of using a steroid, even this steroid, you're gonna see the effects of hypertension damaging the kidney. The classic condition is focal segmental glomerular sclerosis. And we see this. Now, obviously this is not gonna be as renal toxic at all as Tren or other big doses of classical use steroids that are used constantly, constantly for years and there's gonna be a, an effect damaging certainly over years and years. Please be very careful. Cardiology effects. This is a classic steroid. It's going to even use by itself, which I have seen independently on lipid analysis for men that are using this, it will lower your natural HDL level. It will increase to different degrees the LDL level. Depending on how sensitive you are, it can even increase hypertension, despite it not being an esterifiable steroid, so there should be no water gain. And most of the hypertension that comes from steroids is definitely from the water gain. We definitely know this. But there's also an effect on the vasoconstrictive effect on the smooth muscle in the arteries throughout the body. This is true. In addition, left ventricular hypertrophy, the actual muscle growth of the heart. You'll definitely see this with all anabolic steroids. This is less anabolic than testosterone, so you'd think it would be safer over years and years and years because it's not gonna grow muscle so much and the heart's a muscle. Again, we just don't know. There are no conclusive studies on this. Heart attacks and endothelial disturbance and possible progression of plaque leading to a heart attack. Again, this is gonna be secondary to all the other issues of the advancing plaque is secondary to multifactorial states involving blood pressure, lipids, and of course, sugar states, and of course, genetics. So please be careful. And in conclusion, this drug is an old classic steroid, still widely used throughout the world. People think it's safe. And the truth is, it's not safe. It's less toxic because it's less androgenic. It's less anabolic than the classic steroids. So it's used with other steroids. No one uses this drug really alone. Could you just use it alone? These are questions that are asked to me all the time. And my answer always is, please be very, very careful. I hope this helps. Thank you so much. Dr. Thomas O'Connor here. I'm glad you made it to the end of the video. If you liked it, hit the like button and please subscribe to our channel. And I look forward to bringing you more cool and interesting videos just like this in the future. Stay strong and healthy.